In the previous video, I went over how to configure GameMaker objects. Now, I want to configure constructors. I'm going to show how we can take an approach similar to how we configured GameMaker objects and apply that to constructor objects. Here, we have an inventory class. There's not much to it other than simple dimensions, a width, and a height. This is a grid-based inventory that you would expect to see in any sort of game. Let's go ahead and add a way for us to configure this inventory. As you can see, width and height is defined through hard-coded integers. What if I wanted to instantiate this inventory with a custom width and height? For example, inventory one equals new inventory, and inventory two equals new inventory. In the first case, I wanna say that the width is two and the height is one. In the second case, I want to say that the width is 10 and that the height is 2. The first approach might be to just pass these in as parameters. I could say 2, 1, 10, 2. Then I would define the parameters in the class definition. Width, height, and I want to make sure that I assign them to our values. Width, height. This works, but it is not very scalable. Every time I want to add a new parameter to this inventory class, I would have to create a new parameter definition inside of the class header. So let's say I wanted to define certain properties, such as maybe the color, or maybe the opacity, whether or not it's active, or it can hold certain items. Every single parameter that I would want to be able to modify has to get added as an extra parameter into the class definition. This is fine, but as you can see, soon enough, these lines of code become extremely long. So what is an easier, more scalable, and more functional way to do this implementation? Let's go ahead and get rid of our parameters. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the parameters up here. I'm gonna return this back to how we started. I want to configure this inventory. So I'm going to pass in a config struct. Let's create a parameter called config, and I know that this is going to be a struct value. In our implementation, I would pass in the struct. I would say width is two and height is one. Let's go ahead and add it to the second definition. Width is 10 and height is two. Inside of the class, I'm going to change width to config.width. Height is going to be config.height. All right, and you might think that we're done here, but this leaves a couple problems. If we don't pass in a config struct, then this class will crash upon creation. And number two, if we don't pass in width and height into our config, then we're going to crash upon assignment. So there's two different ways that we can solve this problem. The first is to make sure that our config struct is optional. We're gonna utilize GameMaker's language feature for optional parameters, and I'm going to assign this to empty struct. This means that if I don't pass in a config struct, then we will default this to an empty struct. This does not solve our secondary problem in which we would crash upon assignment. Inventory 3 is new inventory and I don't pass in anything here. We assign config to an empty struct, but then when we go to read width and height from our empty struct, we crash upon assignment. So here we're gonna continue off of something we did in our previous video, which was use the nullish operators to define default values. So rather than accessing width and height directly, I'm gonna do something that might look a little familiar. I'm gonna change this to access as a struct dynamically for both the width and the height. So now if width and height are not defined in our config struct, instead of crashing, it will simply return undefined. But we don't want width and height to be undefined. We want to be able to define our defaults. So the next step is to use the knowledge operator. Here, I'm gonna say double question mark, and then I'm going to assign the default value. Let's say in this case, I want our width and height to be one. So the way that this assignment reads is we try to access width from config. If it's defined, we assign it to width. If it's undefined, then we default to one. This allows us to to define our default values, but to also override them through our config struct. Two things that are great about it, as I mentioned previously, width and height as parameters into the inventory system are optional, and the config struct itself is also optional. Let's say that I had a parent class. We know that this is an inventory system, so maybe I want to render it as a UI element. I'm going to set up function UI parents. It's a constructor. And in order for this inventory class to inherit from our UI parent, I'm going to put UI parent. Now we know that our inventory is a child of our UI parent class. This UI parent class might do things like render. We might have a method in here called render. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and just add a few other elements. I'll create a private section, say double underscore, and with underscore alpha equals one. Now, before I render, I might say draw set alpha is alpha. And then I want to reset the alpha to one afterwards. And then I want to do my drawing here, do drawing. Okay, so this is a hypothetical parent class. And in this case, we could implement our config struct the exact same way. I could say config is empty struct and alpha is going to be, instead of hard coding to one, I'm gonna say config of alpha and default to one. So now, once again, when I instantiate any of the UI parent class, if I don't pass in a config, we'll get an empty struct. And if there's no alpha member to this struct, we default to, to one. Now the question arises as to how do we deal with this config struct through an inheritance structure? I can go ahead and start by passing this config through to the parent. Remember, I'm instantiating inventory and it's going to implicitly inherit all of the code from UI parents. In this example, I'm never manually instantiating an instance of UI parent. I want to pass in config to the inventory and I want to ensure that that gets passed to the parent. Now the great part about this entire system is when I declare the inventory, I can go ahead and now define the alpha. I could say that alpha is 0.5. Know that it's going to pass in through the config and first it will pass it up through the parent. So now the parent will run, it will see that alpha is defined and then it will set it. Then the UI parent class will finish executing and then we will execute the inventory. And because it is the same struct reference that gets passed to the child class as well as the root class, we know that these members will still be preserved through the config struct. So this means through this system of setting up an optional configuration struct and passing it through to our parents that we can define members for every aspect of the inheritance chain. I could add another level to this and I could say complex inventory. I'm go ahead and pass in an optional struct and I'm going to go ahead and have this one inherit from inventory and once again if I go to instantiate complex inventory I could add members here that are very specific to the complex inventory I could say item type equals config item type and default that to any when I go to instantiate this inventory, I can define item type. And as was the case previously, this config struct will get passed first into the complex inventory. It will get passed to the inventory and then it will get passed to the UI parent. The UI parent will resolve, the inventory will resolve, and then the complex inventory will resolve. This means that once again, all of these parameters passed into this one single configuration struct can be applied to all levels of the inheritance chain. In the next video, I'm going to expand on this topic and show a couple more tricks that we can do with this config struct.